Washington or not. How, but uh, there's a lot of things I want to talk about. First of all, have you, you've been keeping a track of what's going on as far as Hurricane Sally's concerned. Good that the president stepped forward at uh, a fast speed and uh, declared the federal emergency for us, and that's good news. Well, it is good news, and, you know, we, we don't have anything against our friends in Alabama and yeah. Florida, uh, but uh, if we can dodge a bullet, uh, I'm, I'm relieved. Uh, and I'm, I've been talking to mayors and leaders down on, on the coast. I didn't bother them this morning, but, but uh, it's going to be a flood event and a rain event still for us. It's not good, yeah. but uh, at least we, we dodged the landfall. And uh, what an amazing thing, two miles an hour, just hovering yeah. over the coast for uh, hours and hours. It's, it is it is amazing. And they could get another 30 to 35 inches of rain. Uh, just a few moments ago, we had the senior hydrologist from the National Weather Service on Marty Pope. And Marty said our collective rain uh, at the highest that we could see over there was two and a half inches. That's all we got, two and a half inches. So speaking of dodging a bullet. Uh, it, 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 it turned at the right time. So that's good news. Well, that, yeah. And I didn't know that. That is excellent yeah. news. Excellent. Yes. Well, it's also good news. As I, far I, as you've Ingles. been talking about forest fires too. Well, you know, I have here, I, I want to share some, since you mentioned this, because you've been in there for a while. Um, speaking of who these people are that are responsible for that, uh, right. f- f- former president Bill Clinton made a significant change to federal land management nearly 30 years ago that created the conditions necessary for massive wildfires to consume portions of the West Coast, according to one fire expert. Shortly before leaving office in 2001, Clinton limited the ability of the United States Forest Service to thin out dense thickets of foliage and downed trees on federal land to bring the West into a pristine state. Bob Zybeck an experienced forecast or forester said uh, that the former president's decision created a ticking time bomb. Well, uh, looks like you have a great monitor there. You know, I, I've, I've been texting with Cindy Hyde Smith this morning. She's been listening to mm-hmm. um, none other than Diane Feinstein, the senator, senior senator from California, told Cindy and me, this very same thing uh, at the judiciary hearing for our two judge candidates over a week ago. The, the practices of the environmentalist to, to leave all of that fuel for fire on the ground and not let it be removed as any sensible person would do. According to Diane Feinstein, liberal senator yep. from California, has well, contributed to the intensity of these forest fires. The other part of that, too, the, the environmentalist. Is- are blaming climate change, but they are actually the ones who have intensified the fires. And at the same time, you've had uh, leak leaders, as far as the governors are concerned, places like Washington uh, and uh, in California, not advising these people because they've been moving in the last 20 or 30 or 40 years, been moving in deeper and deeper into some of these forests, building multi-million dollar homes, uh, and uh, it was a ticking time bomb. Absolutely. Caused by by government policy. Look, uh, there's some breaking news out there for a little bit earlier this morning that we got. The U.S. government uh, outlines plans to make the vaccines for COVID-19 available for free to all Americans beginning in January and possibly later this year. What have you been told? Well, when we get a vaccine and when it's approved by the FDA, um, I, I do think as much money as we've spent shutting the economy down to prevent people from uh, from transmitting it from person to person. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good investment by the federal government, yes, would be to invest taxpayer dollars in getting everybody vaccine. Uh, President uh, said it's interesting. We're, we're hearing vaccinated. Some, some of the uh, liberal candidates uh, for senator are, are saying they're not quite sure they would take the shot, if it was available, I think it's, that's going to hurt. Uh, I, I think uh, I think uh, your cohort in the Senate, Kamala Harris, has also said she doesn't trust it because uh, Trump is advocating it. And I think that's a terrible signal to send. Uh, when we when we get a, a vaccine, it will be FDA approved, and the, and it, it will be the ultimate answer to get the economy 
uh, uh, back roaring again like it was in February and March. Well, we're well on our way looking at some of the numbers. i got to ask you this. I mean, you know Joe Biden um, to a greater kind extent of. than most people. <laughs> you, you, I mean, but you've, you've been around uh, Washington for a while. How do you describe his decrease in comprehension over the last five or six years? Well, I, I mean, you, here's you've what seen I want it. Joe, here's what I want Joe Biden to do. I want him to do exactly the same kind of format that President Donald J. Trump did yesterday. Uh, a town meeting, um, hostile questions from, uh, from all comers. I mean, he knew he was going to get hit about this Woodward book. I, and I think, uh, I, I think he was absolutely on top of that occasion. I didn't get to see mm-hmm. all of it, obviously. But, I, you know, that's going to tell the tale. It, it, is Joe Biden, not only is he going to debate, uh, where you can have hours and hours and hours of preparation, but is is he going to go out and do a town meeting, uh, and and, uh, and show us that he is on top of his game enough to be the leader of the free world? I challenge you there, to do that. Yeah, there there are a couple of stories out there. One I think it was in the Hill, but there are a couple of stories out there that he is scared to death of COVID, uh, and 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 it's by his own volition that he doesn't want to get out there. So that that, that may or may not be true. Well, we can we can put him six feet, twelve feet away from questioners, and uh, and sit there and take questions for a couple hours. See how he does. And you also, other... uh, just let him tell what what is his uh, vision for the, uh, his socialist vision for the future of America is, and let the voters decide. Uh, I'm looking at one story here. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has laid out a multi-trillion-dollar spending plan that would raise taxes by $3.4 trillion on mostly wealthy Americans and corporations over the next decade. But don't be uh, fooled by that, because sooner or later it's going to get to the middle class, and there will be a giant uh, sucking sound again of businesses moving out of this country. In January and February, we had the lowest unemployment rate that that we've had in in your and my lifetime, 3.3. Five percent. We we used to say uh, unemployment could never fall below four percent because people were moving around. Three point five percent unemployment, and that's because of the the Trump tax cuts passed by Republican House and Senate in 2017, and the lowering of regulations on job creators. Those two factors, and I think the confidence they had in the in the new judges being appointed, particularly to the Supreme Court, that mm-hmm. caused um, risk takers to create jobs. And, and what Joe Biden wants to do is, is exactly reverse that. And so a small business person who's thinking about creating jobs, uh, it is, uh, saying I better not do that because I've got a, a, a bigger tax bill coming. It's exactly the opposite of what gave us the strongest economy in, uh, in our memory. I think most people sitting here would say we're pretty confident in this election, if, unless people are just brain dead. They can see the differences here. Uh, but the thing that worries us is the mail-in voting. And and I think everybody out there thinks that this mail-in voting, they're going to attempt to uh, fix this election. And even Hillary Clinton, I think she gave us the game plan on this, and she was talking about it. Uh, let, let's Don't concede, no matter... If it's a landslide, don't concede because they'll be counting votes for seven days, ten days after the election uh, in some of these swing states, and the numbers are going to change. They're kind of getting us ready for this. Your thoughts on that. And also I want to talk about this Middle East peace agreement that was uh, done yesterday. You might not have known that if you watch some of the mainstream media. We'll talk uh, more about that to uh, Senator Wicker. What, what's the, the next step or the status of uh, the stimulus bill working its way through or trying to? I, I think we need a stimulus bill. Uh, I think the, the one that Mitch McConnell proposed uh, was very generous and uh, gets us where we want to go. The problem is Nancy Pelosi says she's going to stay in Washington until we get a deal. But she also told the White House, the Secretary of the Treasury, don't come and talk to me unless you're willing to agree to $2.4 trillion. Until you agree to that figure, there's no need to even start talking again. So uh, uh, 
obviously we we don't need to uh, to break the bank, and uh, and and so we're not we're not going to negotiate under those circumstances. So there, nobody's there talking a, right now about that. A problem solver caucus in the House that came up with a compromise yesterday. Maybe that'll get us back to the negotiating table. Was that members of both the House and Senate? Uh, I'm sorry, both of the Republicans and the Democrats who came together. M- members of, of both parties. Yeah. Uh, and, and here's what's going to happen October the 1st. All of this airline money runs out. It, it cuts off then. And mm-hmm. you're going to see cities without air service and and, uh, and routes uh, just uh, postponed or, or canceled. Um, we, we need to avoid that. So that's the that's the Trump card that uh, that that you guys are holding as far as the Republic or the Democrats are concerned. I don't know. I don't know if we have a Trump card because yeah. Nancy Pelosi has made a, a calculation that if if the economy crumbles the first of October, that will help Biden and it will help congressional Democrats. So I, I don't think that's a Trump card, but it, yeah. it is a fact. And I'm just telling you, uh, we. we we can have another March-like uh, implosion if if we don't get another package done. The other part of that is she 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 refuses to take that money out for the post office, or has that been settled? Well, she didn't want to do things piecemeal, but then she did a post office bill. I, I think yeah. the the postal service argument was bogus. Uh, the mail is being delivered. Actually, volume is down. And and the postal service has a fifteen billion dollars surplus, so I think it was a little boomlet that <laughs> that uh, she was using. I think that's kind of faded away. Are, we, are we you need, worried? I, yeah. Okay, I'm just telling you, we we need a bipartisan solution as Americans, like we had in March. I agree with Jordan you, and I think the the, the American people want that. Yeah. Are you worried about the mail-in voting? What's your perspective on that? I, you you know uh, what I'm worried about is that Republicans are going to decide that usually vote by mail are going to decide not to do it. Now we don't have much of a problem in Mississippi. Uh, it's limited. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, if, if people vote by mail, the, the ballots will be delivered, but, but it, it does seem to me that, that maybe we're scaring conservatives away from voting because we don't trust the postal, uh, system. Um, I say, uh, in, in these States where they've done it routinely, mm-hmm. Republicans have done okay. Um, mailing their their ballots in, but look, I, I, I hope you'll uh, give a little time to, to talk about this Israeli uh, peace settlement, which is Let, uh, let's let's do that. Your thoughts on, this. on the mainstream yep. media. I know. I, I, it, you know. It, go ahead. Well, well, yesterday a major major agreement uh, between uh, uh, a couple of Arab states and Israel, recognizing them for the first time since the nineteen forties. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu flew all the way to the White House for this ceremony and to listen to the 7 a.m. network news and, uh, and, and watch the, uh, the Drudge Report and other mainstream outlets, you would think it didn't happen. When the history of the Trump administration is written, whether that's one term or two terms, and I hope it's two terms, this Israel agreement, the fact that we moved the uh, the embassy to Jerusalem, the fact that in spite of that, we've gotten Arab states in the region to recognize the existence of Israel is going to be one of the major achievements of this presidency. And and it's being absolutely ignored because it helps Trump uh, uh, in the election. Um. You know, the other major thing, amazing thing about this is here's a guy, when you talk about Woodward's book, when you said some ticked off generals, when you look at um, uh, deep state operatives, never Trumpers, and, and a lot of uh, Democrats out there talking about this guy's over his head. This guy's not a politician. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Biden says this over. How in the world could his accomplishments on the economy, on the military, on trade agreements, on, 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 over, now peace, of course, how in the world could this guy who knows not, nothing as a politician get all this done? It's amazing. Let's look at the fact, at the facts, the judges, the economy, the jobs, the peace agreements. Uh, This has been a very successful term. It's always good seeing you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Look Thank forward to getting much. back You're in the studio. Uh, Thank you. Bright and cheerful this morning. Same to you. I got this Don Johnson look on this morning. Appreciate okay. it, sir.